Alrighty, so in this video I want to cover the changes going from version 2.1 to 2.2 for the Ultimate FPS Template plugin. Now, going from version up to version 2, that was a big update. 2.1 was another big one, that was the introduction of the character component, so we got a complete overhaul on that system. And then version 2.2 focuses heavily on optimization and a couple new features that I've been wanting to implement for a while, specifically the left hand animation. So to start, let's just work our way from the bottom and go up to the top and then I'll go ahead and show you which, well, I'll go ahead and just iterate through and show you them in action. So obviously, as I stated, this was a big optimization focused patch. So a lot of done, a lot has been done for caching. So we now have pretty much direct access to the parts instead of iterating and having to find them which was something that I'm not happy with how I set up initially, but I'm glad I at least got this set up and done and out of the way. And it also made it a little bit easier to handle parts down the road as well. Uh, did some other things. I changed up the toggle light and toggle laser function. So th this way it just makes a little bit more sense and you get a little more flexibility out of it. So if I head down here to where we have the... Yep, so here we press V to toggle the light and B to toggle the laser. When I have a new function called use light laser, and what this does, it takes in an enum as a parameter and you can toggle between or choose to either toggle the light, the laser, or you can do both of them just through this function. It just makes it a little bit easier and cleaner in my opinion to just have one simple function to handle it. All right, next up, finished work on caching all the parts. So that was when I went and saw that. I uh, went through and reworked a little bit of the replication. So this way we are only replicating what is needed to other clients. Other stuff that does not need to be replicated is no longer replicated at all. And anything that can be replicated only to ourselves is now only replicated to ourselves. So this should save up a decent bit when it comes down to bandwidth and then more optimizations in regards to passing around parameters. So. I added two helper functions for the character component. I've already covered this in a previous video, but ragdoll and ragdoll with force. And what this does is it applies the ragdoll effect that is created in my static uh, library to trigger the ragdoll on both the third person mesh and the first person mesh. So it just kind of applies it to the entire character. It's just a helper there. And I ended up adding a little bit better support for looking up and down. So currently this is all Again, procedural. So if we head over here, go to the class defaults. Under toggles, don't know why I have it under there, still gonna probably need to rename it. But we have the option to use procedural spine. And then we have a new one here, which is spine bone count. So if I head over to the animation graph and go to where we lean up and down, you can see I have, right now, it's set to one because I'm only bending on one spine bone. And I set this here as an example. So if I wanted to blend this between two different spine bones, all you do is just hook it up like that. So I'll do spine two and spine three and change spine bone count from one to two. And now it is blending between both of these spine bones evenly. So that was just one of those little helpers there. So it's you don't have to do any sort of division or anything like that inside of the animation graph, which is not something you want because it disables the, uh, I believe they call it the animation fast path or something like that. It's just an optimization there. I okay, ended up fixing a crash regarding forward grips, and I got this finished. So this is the new left-hand IK system. So I figured I'll go ahead and show this now. And basically what that is, is each forward grip and each handguard have their own pose on them. So this is blending from the lower arm down to the hand. So if we head over here to the handguard, and I will also load up the vertical grip, here, you can see the handguard has this option for a grip animation. Now I have it set to none because I'm using my default animation, so this is not needed. And then when I head over to the vertical grip, you can see I have a grip animation. So I can go ahead and show you that. So keep in mind I'm not an animator, so my poses are pretty bad. But if I add the little stubby grip, which I just realized the image is backwards, oh well. You can see the grip pose changes. His finger is now extended, and he's just got a different grip pose. This is mostly just to kind of show that off. Wrong key. And then if I switch over to the angled grip, we have the same deal. He's now got a different pose for the angled grip. 
Then we have a piece of rail segment, which is something I'll show you in a little bit, in which case I can throw on the vertical grip, which again has, whoops, its own grip for that. So it's each grip has its own unique pose that it can do for the left hand, and this should carry over really to any firearm. So you would have your base pose like for the handguard, and this is all working with IK as well. So for that, uh, I'll just show you pretty straightforward. And then we head over here, go over here, add this here, add that here. And as I drag it forward, you can see the hand follows. So it's all set up with the IK system. So that's nice and good to go. So it's now kind of got the Tarkov style. So if you want to, for example, have, like I showed in a previous video, that 45 degree angle with like off to the left uh, vertical grip, you can do that. Right, uh, same thing goes for handguards as well. So like I state here, if you have a thin M-Lock key mod uh, handguard, like what I have here, just a real slim design, you can have a pose for it. And then if you have a thick quad rail, it would require you to have a different grip. You could have a pose for that as well, and it would perform it. So I added two new functions, get magnification sensitivity and get magnification sensitivity start value. So these are, let me actually go to the blueprint character because that's the one I have it on right here for the example. So this one, basically, when you use a magnified optic, let me go ahead and I'll just throw the thermal on. When you're looking in, I'm at one power right now. And if I go to two power, three power, and then whatever else I'm on, my mouse. So I'm moving my mouse at the same speed right now, and I'll zoom out. You can see it changes your sensitivity. That's what that's for. So it just gives you a return value based upon your current magnification of the optic and whether or not you are aiming. Then we have this one, which does the exact same thing. The only difference is it uh, only activates past a certain magnification. So for example, if you want it to only slow the mouse down past four power for your optic, you would pass in four, plug that in, and you're done. So that's what that does. Quite simple. All right, uh, but more about the left hand IK. Uh, yes, this. So I got it set up. I went ahead and had to do minor change, but I got it set up now. So basically what's going on is actually, now that I think about it, I just realized I may have made a mistake here, so I might have to double check this. I'll add it to the to-do list real quick to check. Okay, so basically now it's set up. So if I'm correct on this, if you import a complete firearm and not one that's just split into several parts, such as the one I provide, like this M4, which has the receivers and buffer tube, bolt and all that, and then parts get added onto it, the whole system should still work and contain, like, you know, everything you need. So you can bring in a complete firearm if you wanted to, everything will work, and then you can add parts onto that complete firearm however you want, such as a forward grip and that kind of thing. So that was all done on the 24th. Moving on to the 25th. I uh, just fixed a replication bug, not a big deal. I uh, ended up getting it working in Unreal Engine 5 how it's supposed to. Now, previously there was an issue with Unreal Engine 5 and render targets in the plugin. I didn't really do anything that I know of that would have made a change, or if there was an Unreal Engine 5 update, I'm not sure, but for some reason it just works now. I don't know what the reason is, but I'm not too worried about it, because Unreal Engine 5 still is not out of beta or testing whatever you want to call it so i set up a temporary fix for the firearm customizer so with the new caching uh, it's kind of caused a latency issue so i'll end up addressing this later on but it's not a too big of a deal as i state here because that is something that is provided as an example on how to use the part component system more than anything it's not meant to be just directly copied and pasted over so developers are expected to overhaul this if they wish to have firearm customization with their own UI and all that kind of stuff to make it look nice. Because as you can tell, it this is just an example. There, it's nothing fancy. It's just to show you how you can use it to create what you want. Okay, so I set up the magnified optics so when you're not aiming, they will refresh every X seconds as well as I did a couple other stuff. Uh, I'll come back to this here in a second. Cache all the parts for the render targets, just another optimization. Uh, fixed your memory leak that occurred when caching the parts, so that's resolved. Uh, went through and finished all the art that you saw, like the vertical grips and the hand poses. And let's see. 
uh, back to the optic. So magnified optics now can refresh every X seconds you specify this when you're not aiming. So as a performance measure and visual pleaser, you can tweak this as well as add another option. So you can clear out the render target and set a color to it if you wish when you're not aiming. So it doesn't update and it just kind of clears it out as well as set up the option to set a material when watch your optic glass when you're not aiming as well. So I'll go ahead and show you those real quick. So we head over to the, I'll just use the ATACR and the thermal. So starting with the thermal, because that's the easiest to see, we have disable when not aiming. And then right now we're doing clear the scope with the material. Let's start from the top. So we're gonna clear the scope with the color and we're just gonna set that color to blue. So let me throw the thermal down. So right now, as you can see, my thermal is good to go. Now when I stop aiming, if we look at it, it's cleared out to blue. So I can change this to whatever color I want. If I want to go to red, I can just go to red. And that's going to be there by default. So that's what that's set up to be. Moving on down, we have the option to clear the scope with a material. So this will just clear it with a kind of a glass like material it's not fully translucent so if i apply it you can see here and i given it a, i'm giving it a blue tint so i can aim i can stop and it's basically just a transparent ish blue tinted lens that's all i've kind of tweaked it to just to still give it that bluish effect but it's not really all that important uh, next thing is disable when not aiming if we uncheck this we have the option to change the refresh rate at which it updates itself so right now i have it set to five so that'll be five times a second and you already know i set up the thermal scope to be kind of laggy so it has that delay to it oh good to know just found a bug so i'm going to end up fixing that and add that to the to-do list but basically what's going on is when you're aiming you would have your normal refresh rate and then when you stop aiming it would still periodically update just at a much much slower rate so whatever you specified so in my case here it was set to five seconds so that's what that's kind of set up to be handled with like that's why that is there um let's save that and i think that just about covers it uh, yeah finished working on all the art so i guess i'll cover the Part attachment system so i discussed that somewhere in here i may not have actually at, yes i did so set up a feature for forward grips so you can use adapters now so what i mean by that is i now have another part so this is my little m lock to picatinny adapter you can see it right here you can ignore this this is just the preview mesh for uh, positioning the parts but we now have this guy so it's just an m lock to a Picatinny adapter because as you saw if I head back over to the forward grip all of the other parts that we have these all use the M lock attachment system like as shown like so however this vertical grip uses a Picatinny rail so what we needed to do was create some sort of adapter for that and still have the pose system work so that's why I ended up setting this up so we now have the ability to attach the four grips onto other four parts. So here I can select just a normal vertical grip. Let me rotate this way so it's a little bit easier to see. Then I can grab whatever one I want. It all works the same. And then I can add the uh, Picatinny rail attachment like so. And I get this other option right here. So this other option appears. And I now have the option to throw on the CAC grip, the vertical grip. And it works. So that's the other thing that's been done. So now you can have all the attachments. So you can go from like uh, M lock to whatever the heck you want. If you have, I don't remember what it's called, but it's got little round holes for the attachment points. You can go to that to whatever adapter you wish, key mod to Picatinny, whatever. It's all set up now and working. So again, as always, this is all replicated. Uh, this is devlog 15 or something i don't know but anyways that is all that is going to be included in version 2.2 and yeah i hope you enjoy it
If you're curious about it and you want to check it out, there's a link to the marketplace in the description below where you can check out this plugin, as well as there is a link to the demo project on the plugin's description as well if you wish to check that out. If you have any questions relating to this or game development in general, feel free to hop in my Discord. That's also linked down below. I'll try to help you out if one of my other members can't. And if you want to support me, you can also find a link to my Patreon in the description. So that is going to be all. I'll see you in the next video.